What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day today, but all I can say is wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, two weeks ago, we were freaking out over the idea of a $200 billion liquidity injection into the markets, and just last night, we get the news of a $6 trillion stimulus package, potentially could be even higher if these guys can't make a decision by the end of the week. We're going to talk about this, how this is going to affect the short-term and long-term economy and what this means for Bitcoin. I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm doing personally, not that you should follow what I'm doing. I'm just a guy on the internet, but I also want to go into specifically what this means and why this could be extremely bullish for Bitcoin. Maybe not short term. I'm going to let you know short term, we could go lower. But long term, this could send Bitcoin absolutely skyrocketing to the moon. Today's video is going to be very short, very to the point. Definitely stick around all the way to the end. You're going to get maximum value out of this video. And if that sounds good to you, you know what to do. Checking out what's going on right now. We're still around the same levels that we were yesterday. Bitcoin still bouncing sort of between the 7,000 and sort of 6.4K level. Diving in, having a look. We do have a lot of the markets down today. A few a few gainers, synthetics, Bitcoin, basic attention. So super quick, let's talk about the charts. And then we have to discuss what is going on right now? This is absolutely crazy. So Bitcoin, well above the 200 weekly moving average. This is very good. We have a lot of VPVR around the $7,900 level. I would anticipate that to be some resistance if we do get to that level. We did break out of this descending channel. So, so far, so good. We do still have a CME futures gap up around $9,060. And currently we are still being held down by the bottom, basically of this support turned resistance right here. We need to get above this. The next level after that is $7,160 and then the 7.8K level. If we fail to break above this short term, we could return back to the low 6,000s and if we fall below that, $5,360. But guys, today we need to talk about something way more important than just these short term charts. We need to talk about this announcement. You can see right here, National Economic Council Director Larry Kudlow says that the virus which shall not be named package, will be $6 trillion. Let me actually play a clip really quick for you guys, and then we need to talk about this. So the total package here comes to roughly $6 trillion, $2 trillion uh, direct assistance, roughly $4 trillion in Federal Reserve lending power. Again, it will be the largest Main Street financial package in the history of the United States. Liquidity and cash for families, small business, individuals, unemployed, to keep this thing going. We're heading for a rough period, but it's only going to be weeks, we think. Weeks, months, not going to be years, that's for sure. And hopefully pave the way for continued economic recovery uh, after this uh, uh, crisis. So just to put that into perspective, this is the Fed's balance sheet. As of two days ago, we were sitting upwards of $4.6 billion. And if we were to inject another $6 trillion into the market, that would more than double. In fact, it would be more than the entire balance today. Or to put that into other perspective, maybe for you uh, cryptocurrency hodlers out there, basically that would be the equivalent of buying the entire market cap of Bitcoin 48 times over. Essentially, these guys are racing, literally sprinting to devalue the dollar as fast as possible in an effort to do whatever they can to get these assets and to get the economy back to where it was. Now, let's actually discuss kind of another way you could break it down. Six trillion dollars, if you were to divide that by all of the 130 million US households, that would be around $46,153 per household. However, I'm not quite sure that's how it's gonna get distributed. Now, if you did not catch this live stream from Anthony Pompliano last night. I definitely recommend checking it out. However, it is a 25 minute live stream. I do understand that can be a little bit long to watch. So I actually took the liberty of breaking this down and I want to play a few clips from last night's live stream because if we're ever going to have somebody break it down, Anthony Pompliano, the pomp from Morgan Creek Digital, you guys know this guy is probably the poster child for Bitcoin. He knows what he's talking about and I want him to explain exactly what this means and what could possibly happen for the future of Bitcoin. If this works, which is not even guaranteed if it will, 
if it works, they've got to weaken the dollar. They've got to flood the they've got to flood the market with dollars, and they've got to weaken that dollar so they can stabilize prices and hopefully start driving towards a recovery. It's going to be really hard to turn the economy back on, but that's what they're going to have to try to do. QE infinity, QE forever, QE gazillion is literally the number they're going for. Six trillion dollars is insane. If you had told somebody three weeks ago that there would be a $6 trillion stimulus package, they would have slapped you. That's how ridiculous this would have sounded three weeks ago. We were talking about being surprised last Sunday by simply having interest rate cuts and a $700 billion. We have, what is that, more than six, seven, eight X what they did last Sunday. We're only nine days since then. And this is where we are. It's absolute insanity. This is the bull case for Bitcoin. Here's my whole take on the Bitcoin situation. We've got interest rates at zero. Maybe they go lower, maybe they don't, who knows? They're going to print money like we've never seen before. More than double the Fed balance sheet. As they do this, we're going to run people right into the Bitcoin halving. We're 50 or less days away from that Bitcoin halving. People are going to realize they're going to flood the market with dollars. My dollar is going to get devalued over time. I got to get out. I got to get to some sort of inflation hedge or real uh, assets because all of these assets prices are going to recover in an incredible way. And so when they go to do that, 50% of the incoming daily supply of Bitcoin is going to get cut. Bam, gone. You're going to go from 1,800 Bitcoin to 900. Incredibly bullish. If Bitcoin does not drastically increase in US dollar exchange value between now and the end of 2021, the entire thesis is invalid. Right. That's what I truly believe. There is no better setup than we've seen for Bitcoin to do what it was built to do. It was built in a crisis, and it is the thing that is likely to help us survive this crisis. But it is absolute insanity that they're going to print $6 trillion and they're going to dump it into the market. And so if we want Bitcoin to end up doing what we think it can do, it has to perform between now and the end of 2021. That gives you about a little less than two years. You're going to run into this Bitcoin halving in May. You're going to get $6 trillion printed, and Bitcoin's got to explode in US dollar value, or the thesis, a lot of people are going to go back and revisit what the hell is going on. What's the end game? Uh, I have no clue what the end game is here, uh, other than I know what I'm doing personally. Uh, I'm protecting my wealth. There's no way that I'm going to be sitting in dollars long term. I actually think that dollars could still strengthen in the short term. If you look at Raul Paul, if you look at Brent Johnson, a couple of others, right? There is an argument that the dollar could strengthen in the short term as we continue going through this liquidity crisis. Asset prices drop, dollar explodes. Uh, but over a long period of time, the dollar is going to get absolutely crushed when you start printing $6 trillion like this. Um, So I just think that this is, that people just got to wake up, right? This is not a drill. This is real. We are talking about numbers that have never been seen before. And what we're seeing is we're seeing the fiat experiment absolutely teetering on whether it will survive or not, right? I, I put a huge thread together and I said, look, I don't know for sure if this happens, but I'm shocked at how many people in the mainstream press and on Wall Street are not talking about the possibility that what we are seeing is the end of the fiat experiment. Since 1971, we went off the gold standard. We lost that sound money component to uh, our currency. And now all of a sudden, what are we seeing? We're seeing incredible levels of volatility. The highs get higher and the lows get lower, right? You get this huge spread of swings around that volatility between the good times and the bad times. At some point, it becomes unsustainable. If you got to print $6 trillion and you literally got to start handing money to people, good luck. Because I don't know what the hell they're doing, but this is absolute insanity. I continue to take dollars and exchange them for uh, Bitcoin. I think that Bitcoin is going to be one of the best inflation hedges uh, coming out of this financial crisis. You've got interest rates at zero. You've got $6 trillion now as a proposal to be printed. Uh, And then you're going to run people right into the Bitcoin halving in May, 50 days away or so. Uh, I just don't see a more bullish situation for something like this. If it doesn't work, um, you know, people ask me all the time, when will I change my mind about Bitcoin? If we get to the end of 2021 and we haven't seen a material increase in the US dollar value of Bitcoin, I will go back and question what uh, has happened with Bitcoin and the thesis for Bitcoin. I just don't see us going from here, uh, you know, less than two years away at the end of 2021 and not seeing that massive increase uh, in the US dollar value. So now in yesterday's video, we also mentioned the possibility of a digital dollar. Now, whether or not that actually happens, it may not, where they may just, you know, issue dinosaur checks, right? Paper checks out to the public. But I do want to also play a clip from this where Anthony goes into his opinion on the digital dollar and how he feels about that as well. Yeah. So here's my whole thesis on the digital dollar real quick, and then I'll run. Um, So everyone's asking me, why do I think that a digital dollar and a digital wallet is so important and so positive for Bitcoin? 
essentially the way to think about this is if the U.S. government or a private organization comes up with a, a digital dollar and it is somehow incorporated into everyday American life, whether you can pay taxes with it, the government can pay you in it, um, you know, you're incentivized in some way to, to use digital dollars, et cetera, what ends up happening is everyone has to get a digital wallet. And what I envision here is what, let's say the UBI payments that they're talking about, right? If the government says that 330 million Americans go get a digital wallet so that we can send you the UBI payments in a digital dollar, I know it got taken out of the bill. I know. But in that scenario, what would happen is you would onboard tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of people just in the United States with digital wallets. All of a sudden, you give them a fiat currency. I don't care if it's a digital dollar or it's electronic in your bank account or it's the paper money. It still has the same monetary policy. It's just changing the technology form factor. And if all of a sudden they give you that and you're onboarded to the digital world and you realize there is the ability to take something that is an inflationary asset that is $6 trillion being printed and it's getting devalued and you can move that wealth into a deflationary type asset like Bitcoin with a disinflationary monetary schedule where you can protect your wealth. I think a lot of people start to educate themselves and realize they can protect their wealth. And so if we can get people those digital wallets. I think it's incredibly bullish to getting people on board to the digital world. And then they can make that decision. Today, it's not very easy for people to go out of the US dollar in the United States into other deflationary assets or inflation hedge assets. It's mostly investors who are doing this. The everyday American doesn't own gold. They don't own other assets. Remember, 50% or more of the United States citizens don't have $400 for an emergency payment. They live paycheck to paycheck. Their 100% of their wealth is in cash and they don't have access to these other things. They don't have the money for it. They don't have access. And so we can onboard them to the digital world. It will be incredibly valuable. So if you want my opinion ultimately on everything that's going on, I believe short term, yes, there could be a lot of difficulties, okay? Unfortunately, you know, you walk around the town right now, everywhere I go, I'm seeing businesses closed. Unfortunately, it even seems like some of them might even end up going out of business from all of this, okay? The unemployment level is definitely going up. It's definitely going to go up as a short-term sort of reaction to everything that's happening right now. It's definitely unfortunate. However, I do believe personally that long-term, this will be amazing for Bitcoin. And I believe as soon as the economy starts to even have a slight bit of a turnaround, I think Bitcoin is going to be definitely at the forefront up there with gold and other hard assets. And honestly, I could easily see Bitcoin surpassing its previous all-time high. So essentially, that is my take on it. Let me know if you feel different about it below in the comments. Let me know ultimately what you guys are doing. Personally, I am very much so hedged in Bitcoin. I don't care if the price goes down. If it goes lower, I will be buying. That's just what I'm doing. I do understand that short term, if people are losing their jobs, and people need that cash, then they're going to sell. And if they're holding Bitcoin, they're going to sell their Bitcoin to get cash if they're afraid of being unemployed short term. But like I said, guys, long term and basically like what Anthony said, when people figure out you know, long story short, what essentially is the ultimate end game for the US dollar and all of these fiat currencies, then I do believe that we will see currencies such as Bitcoin, which actually is just switching into the green right now as I'm making this video. Uh, yeah, in the long run will be the place to be. And that's why I continue to be massively hedged into Bitcoin. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video a little bit different today. I just thought that was really important to get out. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Definitely check out Anthony Pompliano if you haven't. If you haven't subscribed to the Crypto Zombie channel, do consider giving it a like, subscribe, drop a comment below, join the free Telegram group if you want. Bunch of people, we just hang out, talk crypto all day. Really no pressure. I'm not trying to sell you anything. That being said, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. I freaking love you guys. You guys rock. You're the reason that I do this every single day. Thank you again. My name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, 